place after the death of a vendor in the hand of a security detail of Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila at Federal Secretariat. Speaker House of Representative, Representative Femi Bajabi Amila paid a visit to the family of the deceased. Stay more than three hours at the naming ceremony and consequently visited members of vendor association and newspaper distributors. Here is what Femi told them at the meeting. Subscribe to GTV Africa on YouTube and on Facebook, GTV Africa Services. For more news. Media and publicity in the house. Honorable Ben Kalu, our spokesperson. My colleagues in the office of the speaker, Ralph Chamberlain, Dr. Charles Omole. More importantly, our hosts, and an NVA, and they are very able, mature leadership, and members of this noble profession. Let me begin by saying, I come to you today not as His Excellency, as he has been saying, not as the Speaker of the House of Representatives, but as Femi Bajabi Avila, a citizen of Nigeria, <laughs> who has been unfortunately caught up in perhaps one of the most unfortunate occurrences of his life. For many of you who know me and who have followed my work over the years, you will know that the focus of my legislative activities over the years has been the protection of the common man. I have done this from day one, and I will continue to do it for as long as God gives me the life to serve as a legislator or in whatever capacity. This is why this has been a very difficult time for me. The irony is not lost on me, and I'm sure it's not lost on many people, that the same person who has championed the cause of the everyday Nigerian, as God would have it, is the same person who for whatever reason, which investigations will unravel, has been caught up in this situation. Just even two days before this unfortunate incident, the House of Representatives had convened a meeting at the Hilton where all stakeholders, police, judges, all stakeholders were gathered to consider the piece of legislation that we are about to lay on the table on Tuesday in the House on police reform, just two days before the incident, which I champion. But I believe that God in his infinite wisdom, whatever faith or persuasion you belong, whether you're a Christian or you're a Muslim, we all believe that God only he knows why what happens, happens. And we don't question it. We will cry, we will mourn. And I have been in deep mourning since Thursday. My friend said, today I'm not wearing black. But what he forgot to tell you was that I had run out of black. <laughs> but I decided at least I will wear my black cap and my black mask. This is a very, 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 very difficult time for me. Like many have said, you guys have been my friends for years. 
I have no idea. I don't know why. And I tell people this. I said, this guy is just like me. I have no idea why. Because some people tell me I'm not a likable person. <laughs> but you guys have always been there for me. During the campaign for speakership, you were on the streets. As you were selling your papers, you were selling me. And that is why I have at every point and every turn reciprocated your kind gesture by stopping whenever. Because I've heard some people say, why did he stop in the middle of the road? No. Some people are not aware of the full facts. We were at the traffic lights and it was red. And red means stop. Many convoys do not stop at red. For, sec for security reasons too. Because part of the training is that you don't keep your principal at a standstill position. To make him vulnerable. That is what I've heard is the training. But I've tried over and over to inculcate that level of discipline in my convoy. That red means red. Unless it's absolutely necessary that we move on red. So we were stopped at that light at red. And my friends, the vendors at the Secretariat, immediately they cited me as is usual. But this time they, they were a lot more than usual. They all besieged the vehicle, singing and shouting and screaming and jubilant. And this is the narration of what happened. And as we were about to move, I felt sometimes, yes, I give our money just to show love. Sometimes I don't. And that is why I said, God orchestrates things for whatever reason he orchestrates them. One, why was the traffic light red at that point in time? Two, why did I at the last minute, as we were about to leave, even though I was greeting and exchanging pleasantly, decide to give them some money through my ADC who cracked the door open and handed the money over to them. Unfortunately, my, one of my security aides sensed the level of threat as by his training. Shot Supposedly in the air, supposedly in the air. And immediately I heard the gunshots. I was screaming like a madman in the car. Why would you do that? Why would he do that? Why would he do that? My driver was, can attest to that fact. My ABC who was in front can attest to that fact. He had never heard that kind of voice from me. And we moved on. And something just told me 50 yards down or 20, 30 yards down just by the court. I kept on screaming, park the car, park the car. And I was hitting my, I said, park the car. It's against their security training. But because of the rage and the anger, they parked the car right there on the road. And the ones at the back said, everything is okay. Everything is okay. That they shot to disperse the car. And so we moved on. But as we moved on, as we got to the Hilton Junction, I was still very uncomfortable. And rather than go straight on, I said, make a U-turn. I said, turn around. That, and they, and they turned around, facing the same direction back to the Secretariat. And we parked, like, like somebody here has rightly said, who observed the whole proceedings but as we parked when we made a u-turn some a couple of people behind us drivers in other vehicles who were not part of my convoy who were just driving along the streets came and said oh no 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 so everything is okay somebody fell and hit his head when he was running away from the blah blah and they're taking him to the hospital uh, this was not the statement from my convoy it was from uh, drivers who were behind us who i don't know they stopped and explained that no, 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 it's okay. So I felt relieved, even though still angry. 
that shots were even fired in the first place. But I'm not a security person, so I cannot assess a threat. I'm not trained. Because later on they were telling me, yes, we know that these are your people. But even in a friendly crowd, that one or two people may infiltrate and you will know them. Those are the kind of security explanations that have been given. So it wasn't until later on at night that I got the full gist of what happened. And life has not been the same since then. I want to commiserate with you. Because here was a young man like each and every one of you that was going on about his daily business, toiling day and night, rain or shine, trying to plan for his family. And his life was brought to an end. A hard-working citizen who never thought, who never knew that that day, Thursday, would be the end of his life. It's very sad. It's very difficult for me. Very, very difficult. Yes, I went to the family yesterday. I met with the wife. I met with the two children, including the one-week-old baby. I was almost overtaken by emotions when I held that child. Emotions because I knew that I was standing as a pseudo-father for the child. I was emotional because I knew I was not the one that was supposed to be carrying that child that day. But that the person who was supposed to be carrying that child was gone. That meant a lot to me. I've made commitments to the family because those children have now become my children. Amen. And I've made commitments to the family to take care of those children till they reach adulthood. I have immediately instructed my lawyers in the office to set up a, a trust for the education the welfare of the children until they turn 21. <laughs> so this incident has affected me in no in ways no one can understand. I can assure you that our brother if I is dead will not be in vain. Again, let me fall back on God. That only God knows why he does what he does. It's the only thing that can give us solace. But we're all human, so we must grieve. We must be angry. We must be sad. These are all emotions, human emotions. But at the end of it all, we must all look to God. And believe in him. Because for many of you, you have the belief system that says his ways are not our ways. And our ways is not his ways, are not his ways. It is interesting, I was telling one of my colleagues yesterday when they came to see me at home then, and I'll say it again here that I don't even buy papers. From the vendors. I stopped that a long time ago, years ago. I don't buy papers from them. And why don't I buy papers from them? Because my office supplies me with papers. Because my office supplies me with papers. So my relationship with them is not transactional. It's not a relationship of buyer and seller. It's a relationship of love. And that's why I continue to stop and hang out with them and play with them and joke with them 
and laugh with them. And that is not going to stop. I have very... I don't have much to say, just to say that May if I so rest in peace. Amen. Like somebody said, I cancelled all engagements and I had so many of them. Very official, very important engagements. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And even tomorrow I'm supposed to be a key, the key speaker at the National Economic Summit Group uh, meeting holding in Abuja. I've had to cancel it. Yesterday I was supposed to be in Niger for an important official event. I cancelled it. Today I'm supposed to be right now in Jigawa State. A date which I gave a month ago. I've cancelled it. Because I'm in deep mourning. And it's, I cannot be mourning and be celebrating at the same time. On the issue of justice, which a lot of people have talked about, justice will take its course. There is a saying that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it always bends towards justice. We will follow due process. I read somewhere yesterday online that uh, Uh, the officer who pulled the trigger had not been arrested. He's been handed over in the last couple of days to the DSS. And they will follow the course. Justice, whatever form it is, will prevail. And that is what we can do or say for now. I have, um, we are we're sitting to, on Tuesday in the house, uh, convening plenary on Tuesday, and I will invite the executive of uh, ANDA and NBA to come to the house on Tuesday and perhaps a few other of your members where we will honor we will be honoring if I okay um, there's a lot to be done on the floor on Tuesday we have the PIB we have the electoral act we have several other issues the police reform bill that we're supposed to also take We'll take a couple of those things, but we will have to, we will do perhaps a half sitting day as opposed to a full day of sitting. <laughs> so let me just um, say at this point that I feel your pain. My pain tells in significance to the pain you feel, to the pain the family feels. This is somebody that you have partnered with over the years. I'm starting to hear that he even just got elevated to another job and he was just waiting to be captured. May he so rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May God give him eternal rest. Amen. May God comfort his family. Amen. May God comfort those of you who have known him professionally and personally. May the death of Ephraim be the beginning of great things for the Vendors Association. Amen. We'll do what we need to do. I've heard your request, Mr. President and Mr. Chairman. I have heard your request and I can assure you that those requests will be handled. If I, his memory will not die. And our relationship as friends will continue to 
be stronger and stronger and stronger as we go along. Sometimes in uh, situations such as this, a lot of good comes out of it. May a lot of good come out of this unfortunate incident. So I thank you again once more for receiving us. Uh, you could easily have said you're upset, you're not receiving us, but in your magnanimity, which everybody has talked about, and in your maturity, and in your recognizing that these things sometimes were not planned, you, ac you accepted to receive us. And I thank you for your very kind words on my person. It is unfortunate that we are meeting in a situation under circumstances such as this. But I assure you that it will not be the last of our meetings. Our meetings will be more pleasant moving forward. So I thank you very much once again. This is not a time to make speeches. It's just a time for me to, to commiserate with you, to identify with you on this painful, this painful loss. Uh, may God bless us all. And may God rest if I use so in peace. Amen.